Hello everyone, today we will be looking at our next topic which is development of pollen sacs or microsporangia. But before going to our main topic, let's have a look at the structure flower which we have already done in our previous lecture. But let's recapitulate it quickly. A flower, it has a stalk which we call as pedicel, then the swollen structure which holds all the whorls of a flower. It's called as receptacle or it is also known as thalamus or it's also known as torus. Then there's a first whorl which is generally green in color, not necessarily but generally it's green in color which is called as sepals or we call it also as calyx. Then it has colored leaf-like structures. It's a second whorl which we call as petals or it's also known as corolla. Then the male part, third world is the male part, which we call as androecium. And in the androecium, we are having this structure like this, this knob-like structure, it we will call as anther, and this thread-like structure, it will be called as filament. Together, anther and filament, we call it as stamen or androecium. Then we have the female part, which is flask-like structure is the female part. It's also known as gynoecium, or it's also known as carpal. It has the structure which we call a stigma. The stigma catches the pollen grains. Then it has a long neck like structure. It's called a style. Then it has a swollen base which we call as ovary. And inside the ovary we are having ovules. So let's begin. Today we will be dealing with the male reproductive part, that's the third world, that is androecium. If we will define the androecium, which we also call a stamen, it is defined as a modified leaf concerned with the production of microspores or pollen grains. So stamen, it's considered to be primitive leaf which has with time evolved to give rise to male proctive part and to form a structure like this where we are having a knob-like structure and a long filament thread-like structure and it's called a stamen. So we can say it's a modified leaf concerned with the production of microspores or pollen grains or male gametes. Now, if we zoom out the structure of this stamen, there's a long thread-like structure which we already know is filament and then we are having the structure here which we call as anther. Together, anther and filament, it's called a stamen or androecium. See, this anther, it's broad terminal bilobed anther. Here, we are having a bilobed, in this picture, it's a bilobed anther and then this long thread-like structure, cylindrical massive thread-like structure which we call as filament. Now, if we will give a transverse cut to this like this, we will cut it like this, we will get a structure like this inside, we will get to see inside of this and third lobe. Generally, if it's a two lobe wherein we are having these two lobes, we will get a structure like this wherein we will be having four corners and at the four, four corners, we will be having four sac-like structures which we call as pollen sacs or microsporangia. Today we will see the development how these pollen sacs or microsporangia are developed inside this anther. So let's begin. First, before going to the actual topic, let's have a look. We are having two kinds of anthers. One is bithecus, another is monothecus anther. Bithecus we have already seen. It's also known as dithecus anther. It's a type of anther which is two theca or two anthered lobes and has four pollen sacs and is also called as tetrasporangiate. See here, you can see the stamen or the anther here, it is having two lobes, one and two, so it, we will call it as bithecus or dithecus, means it's two-lobed. And now if we will get transverse cut to it, we will get to see the structure like this where we will be having four pollen sacs. So we can say it is tetrasporangiate. By tetrasporangiate, we say there are four pollen sacs. So bithecus anther having two anther lobes and inside the two anther lobes, each anther lobe will be having two pollen sacs and as a result of that total of four Microsporangia or pollen sex will be there and the bithecus or dithecus anther will also be called as tetrasporangia. Why tetrasporangia? Because inside it has four pollen sex. Now another is monothecus stamen. Now in monothecus stamen there is just one lobe and it's typical of Malvaceae family like Malva, Hibiscus, 
there you will see the enter it is just one loop and inside the one loop there will be just two pollen chambers only half of this will be present there so there will be just two pollen chambers or two pollen sacs and as a result of that we will call this monothecus and this bisporangiate here we are having a picture of a tetrasporangiate and a bisporangiate and there you can see here one pollen sac is here, another pollen sac is here, another pollen sac is here, another is here. It means there are four pollen sacs and it is called as tetrasporangiate and the anther is also bilobed or we will say it is bithecus or dithecus because if you see it will be having two lobes and in each lobe we will be having two pollen sacs and total of four pollen sacs so tetrasporangiate now have a look here we are having the anther but it's single lobe and inside it there are only two pollen sacs and as a result of that the anther is bisporangiate anther and it's seen in the maulaceae family now coming to the development of these now we'll see how these pollen sacs are formed so let's begin now, stem and primordia are initiated as a whirl of small bumps at specific locations of the anther. When the flower primordia emerges on a vegetative plant, we can see that the stem and primordia, the initials of the stem, and they arise at small bumps on the specific locations of the flower. This you can see these small bumps, they are represented by stem. And now, what happens? This is a young anther. What happens to it? You can see if we will give a cut to this young anther in its first stage, it will look like this inside. There we will be having a single layer of epidermis and inside it there will be a mass of meristematic cells. By meristematic cells, we know meristematic cells are the cells which have the power of division. So in a young anther in these small bumps which are arisen, which arise on the flower primordia, if we will get transverse cut date, we will get to see the structure like this where we will be having a single layer of epidermis and inside it there will be a mass of meristematic cells. These meristematic cells they will be having the power of division. Now what will happen the next? Epidermis will remain same but immediate to epidermis this layer it, we call it as hypodermis layer. It is sub uh, epidermal layer and it's called as hypodermis layer. At the four corners of this, the anther will become bigger in size and at the four corners, there some cells will start to differentiate. They will become bigger in color, uh, sorry, bigger in size and the nucleus there will become prominent and these cells will be called as archosporial cells. So the differentiation of the archosporial cells in the hypodermis at the four corners of the young anther will start. Firstly, we will be having the small bump-like structure which is the young anther. If you will give a cut to it, we will get a structure like this where we will be having a single layer of the epidermis and inside there will be mass of meristematic cells. Initially, no differentiation but eventually what will happen? This young anther, it will elongate in size and at the four corners, certain cells they will differentiate by achieving dense cytoplasm, prominent nucleus and will get bigger in size and these cells they will get differentiated from the rest of the cells and will be known as archosporial cells and this will happen in a tetra, I'm talking of a tetrasporangiate and the, at four corners these will get differentiated. Now what will happen? In another stage, this archosporial cell, it will undergo periclinal division. It will divide periclinally. Periclinal division is the division which is parallel to the surface like this. These cells, they will divide like this. And as a result of that, by their division, we will be having at four corners, one layer of cells which will be towards the epidermis and another which will be towards the center of the anther. The cells which will be towards outside, which will be subepidermal, they will be called as primary parietal cells. And towards the inside, these cells, it will be called as primary sporogenous cells. So the archosporial cells will divide by periclinal division to give rise to subepidermal primary parietal cells and inner sporogenous cells. In next, what will happen? These primary parietal cells, they will go number of periclinal and anticlinal divisions and finally the 
wall will be established around each sporogenous tissue. See, here we are having the primary parietal cells and inner sporogenous cells. These sporogenous cells will also divide and will form a sporogenous tissue, mass of sporogenous tissue. But what will happen simultaneously, these primary parietal cells will also undergo many divisions and they will surround these sporogenous tissue on each side forming a concentric circle and will be having a multilayer formed here see epidermis is as such then from the primary parietal cells we will be having the endothelium the next layer which is single layer endothelium then we will be having two to three middle layers and then there will be tapetum around sporogenous tissue and inside it will be having sporogenous tissue let me revise See, we are having primary parietal cells. They will undergo division and will form the wall. And this wall, it will comprise of endothelium, middle layers and tapetum. So, from primary parietal cells, we will be getting an epidermis. So, uh, sorry, endothelium, middle layers and tapetum. Epidermis was already there. Okay. And then finally, we will be having inside it this primary sporogenous tissue. It has divided and has formed the primary sporogenous tissue inside sporogenous tissue inside so the sporogenous tissue it will be surrounded by tapetum then middle layers then there will be endothelium and then there will be epidermis talking of the epidermis epidermis is single layer as you have seen it was there from uh, the young anther and at maturity it will shrivel off and will break then we are having the endothelium this endothelium it has arisen from the primary parietal cells its cells have fibrous thickenings but the walls are thin and as a matter of that this endothelium will construct to the line of dehiscence means it will decide from which uh, the anther will dehisce and will release the pollen grains it's also known as stomium means it will give the line of dehiscence which is called the stomium which we will read then we are having middle layers these middle layers are two to three in number and they eventually degenerate in the mature anther and then we are having tapetum this tapetum is a nutritious tissue its cells may be binucleate, multinucleate or uninucleate which we will see. We are going to see this tapetum in detail. And inside it we are having the sporogenous tissue. The cells which are sporogenous tissue which are going to form the pollen grains which we will see later on. So summary is anther wall consists of falling layers at maturity epidermis this is single layer of cells which becomes stretched and shrivels of at maturity then we will be having endothelium it's a single layer of endothelium its cells have fibrous thickenings they remain thin wall and constitute stomium which is the line of dehiscence then we are having middle layers which can be one, two or three. We generally disintegrate and mature anther. And then we are having single layer of tapetum. The tapetum layer will, uh, tapetum layer can be multi-uni or binucleate and it gives nutrition to the developing microspores. This is all. Thank you.